Dr. Ball taught us that no one can ever find peace unless he learns to give himself to the needs of his neighbor, whoever and whatever his neighbor is. He believed that we all need each other, not because we're insecure, unstable, or dependent, but because this is the way we enlarge each other's worlds. He encouraged us by saying, even if the world's pain and grief seem always to be large, it is helpful to remember that it would have been larger except for your response. And he reminded us that someone will depend upon the care with which all our work is done. Someone will need the kindness with which all our words could be spoken. Someone will be fulfilled by the love which all our acts might manifest. I must have heard your talk on love at least ten times. I've learned that love is not about finding the right person, but being the right person and working hard at the relationship. Dr. Ball has cheered the hearts of all who have come within even remote contact with him. He firmly believes and practices the attitude towards life that to enter into life wholeheartedly will give birth to a love for it, a love which will spread to everything else that lives and which will attach to even the life-giving fact of death, a glowing, contributing quality not to be feared. For some reason, I just can't get the image out of my mind of Dr. Ball raising his finger at the end of a story and proclaiming, I've never regretted it, with his vibrant smile on his face. How is that possible? I bet he would admit that there may be some things he does regret, but I bet he'd say that the big things in his life, his wife, his family, Walla Walla, teaching religion, have been so good to him that he can't complain. Maybe he has never regretted it simply because he's thankful for lessons learned and lessons taught. This distinct memory of him also gives me solace in the face of a very deep sense of loss. He goes without regret, in peace. He has glided joyously through our lives on a dozen rickety bikes, shouting greetings of, hello people. His eyes have twinkled kindly at our questions, no matter how large, or small or silly. He has forgiven our faults, challenged our hearts, and prodded our minds to reach a little further. He has turned more than one life around toward the sun. Your spiritual leadership and support, which have nurtured and sustained us over the years, are overwhelming. Quietly yet firmly, you are our North Star, constantly showing us the way to live our lives fully and with meaning. In the fall of 1979, I was one of those sanctimonious freshmen in your religion class. Fast forward to 2010, and I find God in everyone I meet, in all the nature I see, and most importantly, in all my interactions with my fellow humans. I strive to emulate your ceaseless compassion, vigorous lifestyle, open mind, and open heart. I am in awe of you but I have never put you on a pedestal. It has always been easier to picture you standing beside me.